Their music will live forever. Please join me the second and fourth Tuesday of every month at 9 a.m. to discover their music. KSJE is supported by San Juan Regional Medical Center, here to meet your urgent and emergent medical needs, whether they are COVID-19 related or not. Medical emergencies happen when you least expect them, whether it's a stroke, heart attack, illness or injury, San Juan Regional Medical Center's caregivers are here to provide care to you and your loved ones. Find out more online at sanjuanregional.com. Twelve minutes past eight o'clock. It's a Monday morning, April the 5th. Good morning, everybody. I'm Scott Micklin. Thanks for tuning in to KSJE 90.9 FM over the air here in San Juan County, New Mexico. 103.3 FM over the air in Durango, Colorado and streaming everywhere from our website KSJE.com. Welcome also to our viewers who are watching our visual radio program. It is streaming live today to the KSJE Facebook page and our Twitter account. It'll be posted on YouTube very shortly. We're glad that you are with us as well, everybody. We have a great show in store for you. We are talking one of my favorite topics about Farmington history in an upcoming great event. It is the first ever historical walk happening in downtown Farmington, May 1st. We'll talk more about that with my guests from Rio del Sol Kiwanis in the next few moments. So stay right where you are. We'll let you know how this is going to be done safely and uh, how it'll kind of highlight some of the old buildings in downtown Farmington as well and show off the great new Main Street downtown as well. Next hour, Mick Hess is going to be here roving with the arts. Mick is going to be playing some more great classical music for us coming up at 9.06 after the news on KSJE. We invite you to connect with us on social media, including our Facebook page, our YouTube channel, and our Twitter accounts. And you can also check us out on Instagram as well. And let's talk about the weather forecast right now. Outside, it is sunny and 46 degrees in Farmington this morning. We're expecting some morning clouds, but some increasing sunshine today and some breezy conditions this afternoon. Another warm day today, 78 for a high in Farmington, 47 overnight. A little more windy tomorrow and cooler with a high of 61 on Tuesday. Windy and 33 overnight, then sunny and 66 on Wednesday. Things warm a little bit back up, 71 on Thursday, 70 on Friday, 72 for the weekend with lots of sunshine and overnight lows. 35 to about 40 degrees. Well, let me turn to my guests who are here with me this morning, as I mentioned, from Rio del Sol, Kiwanis. Jill McCreary is here. Good morning. Thank you for coming in this morning. Good morning. Good to have you here to talk about this kind of new reconstituted event that you've got planned in May. Yes. Which will be here before we know it. Oh, it's coming up fast, it, May 1st. It really <laughs> is. It really is. Also joining us, the... One and only, Careful. hard to introduce, <laughs> Ron Price. Good morning. Good morning, Scott. I was Good trying to, to think of the you. proper adjective, yeah. and there really isn't one no, for you. No, there isn't. Thank though, you, though. But it's great That's to have true. you here, Thanks. Ron, because you're part of this event as well, and we'll learn more about that in a moment. Yes. I'm not part of Kiwanis, but I am part of this event and thrilled to be. It's going to be a great event. You're an adopted Kiwanian, I would I'm say, a, probably, for this event. <laughs> there so, you go. Good to have you here. But, Jill, let me turn back to you a little bit about Rio del Sol Kiwanis, because this is a group that is done a similar event in the past that both Ron and I have been a part of called Dining with the Dead. Yes. And of course last year when normally it would have happened we were in the midst of the COVID-19 pandemic as we still are now that we're talking this morning but th that event you really couldn't do safely at that time and so the plan was to maybe just pause and see what we could do maybe in 2021. Exactly. And here we are. Exactly. Right. Uh, when we found that we were going to have to uh, cancel for last year for Dining with the Dead, I sent an email to the actors and I said, hey, would you guys like to do one in the spring and one in the fall? Well, the response was, oh, maybe, uh, nah, or yeah, if you really <laughs> want to. And I thought, wow. <laughs> right. Well, <laughs> there's so response. much so much uncertainty, right? I guess we can understand why some so, of those would be that way. Right. 
So then I thought, well, this had always kind of been a dream of mine that I would like to do this downtown and have actors in costume standing beside their businesses. So then I sent an email and I said, what do you guys think about this? And everybody came back with, yeah, I like that idea. Yes, I can do it. I'm in. So that's, here we are. Here we are. That's how Thank it, you. How it came to be, right? And so here we are. And so this is the um, Farmington Historical Walk on Saturday, May 1st, 4 to 8 p.m. And so the idea is folks can come in their family units, whatever they feel comfortable with, right? And they will go and you'll have a map and they can go and visit the different folks. Actually, uh, the way it's going to be run is they will come to Artifacts and come in the back entrance and there they'll get their tour number, just like we do for Dining with okay. the they get a tour number. And then they come in and should we talk about what they're going to see? We can talk about that, sure. So it starts at, at Artifacts. Yes. And so, and you're going to have entertainment there too, I know. Yes. Sally Ann Bachman and a lot of people I'm discovering know exactly who Sally Ann is. Yes. <laughs> and Sally Ann, in her younger days, sang all over Europe and all over the United States. She's been on stage with like Red Skeleton and Bob Hope, and I'm sure you probably know others that she's been on stage with. But those are pretty big names, so I don't. You could stop at Bob Hope, and I think we know that where Sally Ann Bachman ranks among uh, singers and exactly. entertainers. You bet. <laughs> and so when this started, she's like. I want to be in this. And she said, if I have to bring my piano down on Main Street, I'm going to be in it. And we're like, well, wait a minute. That <laughs> sounds <laughs> like Sally Ann Bachman. I can hear her saying that. Yeah. We thought, well, we can do something else. And so then, then she said, and I'm going to ask Sheldon Pickering to play for me. And Sheldon said yes. So um, hopefully Wines of the Sun Wines can be there selling wine. Mm hmm so people can come in and have a glass of wine if they wish and, and listen to the entertainment. And then we'll start at 4 o'clock and the, they'll go to the front foyer there. And then Dion Nolan is our starter. And she'll talk to them and give them some history of Farmington. And then the guide will take them out the front and then look across the street where the olive tree is. Right. And that was where the old city hall was. Correct, right. So we'll have a board up with the city hall, and the old fire station was back behind. And It was all in one building back in the, the day. The fire right. station was separate. The okay. jail was. Oh, in that's the, right. The jail the, was in the city hall. Yes. That's right. And we'll talk about the Hello Girls that were upstairs. and and um, They were working the switchboard. Oh, yes, yes. Right. Okay, <laughs> just to be clear. <laughs> what City Hall was all about back in the day. That's right. <laughs> a little concern there. Right. And so, yeah, so, and then we'll just give history, and then and then Tom Taylor will start it off as C.C. Muma, his grandfather. Right. And, of course, and then, and it goes on from there. And so yes. you've got, gosh, how many how many of us are involved besides yes. Ron and I, because we're in it? Yes. Well, there's a total of 15 actors and 14 stops. And the... The actress will talk for three, three and a half minutes. It's a little shorter than Dining with the Dead, but there's more actors. Right. Okay. And so they're real, and they're spaced all up and down Main Street, and folks will be led by a guide. Yes. So they're not just wandering the street by themselves no, trying no. to find these, these folks, right? So there you are. And all of our guides will be in a costume. Right. And then they'll, the guides have a lot of history to share with their groups. Right, and so, and again, you were able to use the new um, complete streets downtown, mm -hmm. the wide sidewalks, and you know the more pedestrian-friendly uh, intersections and things like that. To really, and if folks haven't been down there, this is a great opportunity to come down and and see what's been done downtown. Oh, exactly, and there's a lot of exciting things going on. Uh, the city of Farmington has agreed to shut off Main Street and Orchard uh, up to where the San Juan Tidal. Uh, entrance is and then we have some old cars from the 1920s and 30s that will have parked along that area so that people can wander around and, and look at the cars and see what people drove back in the early days right Right, that'll be great. And I know the men are going to love that. Oh, I, I think everybody <laughs> will love that. But and then that, and so many of these characters are kind of from that early 20th century. 
1920s, 30s time in Farmington. Is that yes, kind of the idea, before, right? Yes, even before, and one is a little bit later. Okay, very good. Well, let's talk about some of the people that are, that are going to be in this, which is why Ron Price is here, because yes. he is going to be um, businessman, entrepreneur, uh, Frank Allen. Never saw a deal I didn't like. Right. God, I'm serious. As I'm preparing. He was multi-talented, wasn't he? You know, multi-talented. He was multi-eager. He was multi-industrious. He, he just, he wanted to make a buck is what my understanding. So he started, he moved here in 1888. He and his wife, he was 24 years old. And two years later, they had a child, but his wife died just about like a week after giving birth. So some months later, he married her sister, Augusta. And we're showing them now on the screen, Augusta now, and Frank Allen. Right. So she's mm -hmm. one of the characters, played mm -hmm. by Rebecca Morgan, who always does such a wonderful job. But he was, he, was a, he had the entrepreneur bug. He started with a livery, the, the Allen livery and stables, and, and then he built the Allen Grand Hotel. And again, as people come downtown, we're going to point out where all these buildings were and really get a feel. He, I talk in my talk about the streets were dusty. I talk about the trains that were running at that time. It's, it's a part of Farmington that I'm going to wager. Well, Frank Allen would wager. I don't. There but, you go. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Mo most people have no clue. And again, as I've been reading and preparing for the character, I, I didn't know that. As I'm just listening to you two talk, I I didn't know the Hello Girls were telephone operators. I'm glad we did clear that up. But you're welcome. That's right. <laughs> I but, didn't know City Hall was there. So yeah. I'm going to learn a lot. It's going to be a fun event. There you go. And uh, he built his businesses, of course. And I think what folks would maybe remember today is that we have le his legacy, the Allen Theater chain, right? That was a Frank Allen business, wasn't it? You know, it? Augusta's going to talk more about that, I okay. believe, than I am. Sure. Uh, one quick point that I'll make is with the livery, and again, he was always thinking, the train came down from Durango. I can't remember if it was every day. I think it was three times a week. And he would hitch up his buggy and ride over to the train station to greet folks and, and give them a ride into town. And, of course, if they needed a place to stay, well. It just so happened. It just so happens I have a hotel. <laughs> right. so. like not, and not just any hotel. I think this was some of the marketing in his, his genius, the Grand Hotel. The Allen Grand Hotel. Everything was Allen, but, yeah, the Allen Grand Hotel. and Right. He was quite the character. Quite the character and quite the businessman and the entrepreneur, which I know is what you'll be talking about because right. he was very, uh, very um, well established. And of course, early on in Farmington, when Mr. Allen was here, there, there weren't a lot of um, accoutrements and hotels and things like that. I mean, this was a pretty rough and tumble place, 1890, 1900. Y yeah. And I'm guessing that there was another hotel because he mentions, of course, they stayed in my hotel, but... You're right. There, there. It was not the town that we have today by any stretch of anybody's imagination. Right. Very good. And so uh, that's just one of the characters. And of course, I will put in my two cents that I'm Alec Bowman um, in this. And Mr. Bowman was um, co-owner of the Bowman Brothers Drugstore with his brother, and um, and that's a whole story as well. And they happened to be the uh, the victims of Farmington's first uh, robbery. That's correct. And that story has been very interesting as we learn more and more about what happened. Well, we thought, as you mentioned, that was the the first robbery. Uh, that and they survived. I should, I should say this. That, <laughs> yes, not, they were yes. victims, but they weren't injured. Uh, but and they were robbed. Yes, and so to end the historical walk, we thought people might like to hear from the robber. Right. There were actually two, but we're just going to have one. Right. And so he can talk about, you know, how much money he stole and how he escaped and never fa never really found or apprehended for that robbery. That's correct. So makes you wonder. It you know? does. And they waited till the next morning to get the posse together. Of course, it was around dusk right. that day. But had they gone right after the robbers, they might have caught them. But they waited. <laughs> they did, and and he got away, and that and it, that's part of the story that that we find out about. But a lot of other um, characters who are going to be part of this, and um, and Jill talk about some of the other folks who aren't with us this morning, and just because studio is so small, we couldn't have everybody here that we would love to have here. But there's a lot of other great 
characters and names that we might recognize, right? Yes, yes. Um, the Hubbard Meat Market, uh, Deanne Waters is going to be portraying Mary Hubbard, and that is, uh, when you look at Navajo trading, the right side of that, and then there's empty buildings. That was where the Hubbard Meat Market was. And then Jimmy Voida is going to portray Wiley Fox. And that really was Wiley's name. <laughs> right. That and wasn't that, a nickname. I think that was his actual his name. His given name. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I wouldn't doubt it. I, and knowing Jimmy, I, you know, <laughs> I'm just going to leave that there. <laughs> well, um, this is Lloyd's Carpets. Mm -hmm. And years ago, you portrayed Frank Pierce. That's right. And Frank stored alcohol in the basement of the Pierce Mercantile and in Dining with the Dead several years back. You talked about how there was a fire at a restaurant and Pierce Mercantile it burned because of that alcohol you right. stored there. <laughs> and spread to the rest of the block, basically. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. And one of the big fires of Farmington. Um, so anyway, Wiley came in and purchased that burned out piece of property. And that's where he constructed um, different versions. But the, as far as I can tell, it was the Alamo Motor Company. Right. Yeah. Well, and today, if you look at that building, you can see it resembles the, the Alamo. Yes. And that's where it got its name, I guess, as part of that whole history, right? Yes, yes. Right there at Maine and maybe commercial Maybe around, uh, uh, around there, or right down that end of Main Street, would say. Yeah. On the eastern uh, side. Right right there. Yep. Right. You're correct. Very good. And then, of course, we have um, Mr. Allen, of course, who we've talked about. And then some other. Orville Ricketts is going to be represented this uh, this year at this yes, event. Yes, Randy West has right? agreed to be Orville. And he was the early newspaper man in Farmington, right, with the, the, uh, Enterprise. the, the Times Hustler newspaper. Mm -hmm. And so that is the precursor after a few mergers and sales of today's daily times but it's been around for a long time right and, and uh it was it actually burned in the fire of uh was it 1911 on the south side of the street uh right before moving up to where orville would be Portraying. in this year's portrayal and that's what another part of this that's different from dining with the dead is that you have tried to figure out where some of these buildings were and these businesses were to exactly. put people in front of them. Even if the building no longer stands or has been rebuilt or reimagined, um, you're trying to find out where they were. And, and case in point is, I think my drugstore, the Bowman Brothers drugstore keeps bouncing around. You try to figure oh out my gosh. Where, where it actually stood. Oh my gosh, that was, I don't know why I became obsessed with that, <laughs> <laughs> right? but I did. I know. Because I knew there was the original one. And, and so finally, Mike Maddox is such a wonderful historian and I finally, I, I said, Mike, hey, can you tell me where the original Bowman Brothers drugstore was? And we all know that it was in a little adobe house on Main Street. Right. Probably, well, you know where TJ Diner is today? It would have been really close to there. Right there. Okay. Right. Because so, a lot of folks think of Farmington Drugstore, which is at Main and Orchard, which was there for years and years and years, but it's not that building. Do you know that the Farmington Drug... Or, or uh, three rivers. Right. <laughs> we go back now. in history, and I talk about the times past. But uh, it's on the historical register that that was the Bowman Brothers, but it wasn't. And John Silva, well, I think I forwarded all that to you, but right. John sent me so much information, and that was never the Bowman Brothers drugstore. So it was very interesting very much so so and i know on the other side of allen avenue and, and main street there's another building what used to have an awning and then when they took the awning down you could see the writing on the building that said purity drug it's which still was there, another drug store right even a, a third one in town the, yes the purity drug was there and so uh was it on an aside, it has nothing to do with the show or the event that's coming up. Well, but we will mention it. The okay, Schnorr, good. The Schnorr Thank you. The brother good. and sister. Right. And uh, people could put up uh, pictures in the window there of their loved ones during the war. Okay. So we've, I thought that was very interesting. That is interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Very much Just so. Just lots and lots of history and so many things that we've uncovered, you know, in the research. Right. Well, and again, we show some of these old pictures of downtown Farmington, and this is another one that um, is probably early 1900s, I would say, and when Frank Allen talks about the dusty 
roads and, and things like that. You can certainly see it in this picture, Main Street. I, I forget when Main Street was paved, but it, it took a long time. It was in the 30s when it was oiled. But okay. I <laughs> well, that helped kept the dust down a little bit, but it wasn't pavement. This is the south side of Main Street. And where the tree is there, that would have, on the other side of that would be where Three Rivers is today. Okay. And you can't really see, but that's the Opera Saloon and the Enterprise newspapers on the other side of that. Gotcha. And that and this is And this is all the south side? Yeah. I see. I mean, yes. <laughs> <laughs> right. And then, would that be City Hall, way in the distance Yes, there? that is City Hall. Okay. And I know folks can't see me pointing at the screen. <laughs> I'm pointing over everybody else. <laughs> but City it is Hall, the building down there at the, the, in the yeah. kind of the middle of the screen, the large building kind of in the distance is what we're talking about. Yes, That yes. Is, is City Hall, but um, but fascinating. And I think even for folks who are newcomers to our community, i am always been a history buff, so I've always been interested in learning about the history of a place where I, where I live. But I think even newcomers um, would find it interesting to come down and learn more about the people, but even just the buildings that we drive by every, every day to learn about what these buildings were that, you know, people may know that Three Rivers is an old building, but may not know that it used to be the Farmington Drugstore. Correct. And, and things along that line. Ron Price, I know you, thoughts about history and learning about the place you live. Scott, I'm wondering why you want to ruin a perfectly good show. I've been, <laughs> I've been fascinated to sit here and listen to you too. I, I do want to say this though, as you look at the cast of characters, many of them have been in Dining with the Dead as you and I have, Scott. It, boy, it gets into your into your blood. I guess that's a good way to put it. It gets into your system. These are just such good events as the past comes alive just for those few moments. And and Dining with the Dead is always sold out within weeks. There's always people, oh, I wanted to go and I couldn't get a ticket. Jill, it's going to be that way with this, too. Are we, we're limiting the number of people that can come to this? Yes, we are. We're going to sell right around 300 tickets, maybe a few more, depending on how it goes. But I really anticipate us selling out of, of tickets. Right. We, I, don't, I don't even know how many to say. There's probably a little over half of them left right now. Okay. And they're being sold through Artifacts Gallery and Howard's Cleaners. That's Correct. where you can get these tickets, Correct. right? And that's the way to do it. And, uh, and again, they are $15 a person. Yeah. Yes. And so the idea is to come down, and it's from 4 to 8 p.m., and so do you have to be there right at 4, or can you come a little later? I know you're going to assign folks into groups, right? Exactly. Uh, the last tour will take off right around 6. So, and the tours are going to take, it depends on how fast the tour group moves, but I would say an hour and 20 minutes, hour and 30 minutes. Sometimes the groups move a little slower uh, when they get fascinated and sure we have uh, entertainment as well at Orchard in Maine and Cindy Reed and two other ladies are going to be singing there at Boogie Woogie Bugle Boy of Company B okay and right. then Miss Emma Chambers who worked at the post office there uh, uh, that's Judy Castleberry right so she'll be talking about the old bandstand that is now at Green Lawn Cemetery and that that was the center of Farmington. That's where everything started. Everything that Maine and Orchard. Yes. Yes. Where everything happened. Right. And, you know, we were talking earlier about sometimes it's hard to know where the addresses were. We didn't have addresses until I think it was 1953. Mm. So that's why <laughs> when you go back in history, uh, it was... <laughs> right. Kind of this is about where it was. <laughs> we think, or maybe they were renumbered, or different different there, numbering. There were no but numbers. Interesting. People lived around downtown Farmington. Sure. You know that's where they all lived, and then they decided they wanted home delivery. So that's when Farmington got house numbers. Interesting. Well, that that makes sense, and of course, a lot of folks too wouldn't wouldn't necessarily remember or know that Farmington for the longest time was a very small community and it was only in the 1950s that really the population exploded with the oil and gas boom in this area but but because Farmington was so small it was really about the same size as, as Aztec and, and, and as I like to tell this is the reason why Aztec is the county seat because Farmington really was wasn't as big as it as it was then as it is now it wasn't the main town in the county aztec was the main town in the county it's the county seat 
So, and a lot of people that came. And there's here, a whole story about that too, but we won't get into that <laughs> one because stealing the things were stolen. Yeah, exactly and right. Was, yes, exactly. That's true. But yes. But uh, yes, Bob Lemer is Avery Amston, and a lot of people in the '50s, as you were saying, you know, when they came, uh, they that's where they stayed was at the Avery. Right. The Avery Hotel. Yes. Exactly. And a picture of that, too, I want to show everyone. That, and folks would probably recognize that building without the front portico, though, but it's at um, Barron and Main Correct. near the Civic Center. And, of course, um, it was one of the another one of the earlier hotels, but the, the Allen Grand predates, I think, even this one. I believe it does, but then that burned down. No, no. Yes, it did. Yeah, the Allen burned down, I believe, didn't it? I thought they I'm not sure. I thought, they tore, they, I thought they, they tore it down. You know, the nice thing about history is if you don't know the facts, just make them up. There you go. Nobody's going to know. That's it. That's one of the Although point, all your facts that you're going to be giving on the first are true. <laughs> exactly right. <laughs> yes. But one point I also want to make, uh, Jill, talk about restaurants. They're going to be offering special special deals for, for visitors, for guests. For, Yes. For tour goers? Uh, tour goers? Most of them, and I hope all of them, will offer like a historical walk special. Okay. So once people have completed their tour, then they can enjoy dinner downtown. And that's what a lot of this was about, too, was trying to get people to come back downtown again. Right. After the complete streets. And well, I think that's why the city's been so helpful in, wanting, in agreeing to shut down the street and allow the historic cars to be parked along Main Street so that... Yeah, on bring, Orchard, on Orchard. Oh, on Orchard, pardon me. Orchard, my... Gotcha. But to uh, to get folks back downtown as well, this is going to be one of the first um, big events in, in downtown, because yes. even the ribbon cutting for downtown was virtual, as I recall, when that happened. I didn't see it. So I was that, gone. <laughs> it, it, it was virtual. But this will be one of the first things that we can do in smaller groups um, as we reopen and uh, and the weather warms up and we're all looking forward to being able to gather again and safely and this has been designed just that way. Yes. So we're looking forward to it. I meant to ask you at the beginning of the show, Jill McCreary, about Rio del Sol Kiwanis and all the other projects that you do and I just got right into the history <laughs> because that's where my mind goes. But Rio del Sol Kiwanis has been a really important part of this community for a number of years and, and does a lot of good. We, we talked to you many times during the fall when you do your clothes for kids drive and some of the other things that you do for kids in the community. So just remind our audiences a little bit about those projects, if you wouldn't mind, because the money raised from this goes to support those things, right? Yeah, that's correct, towards our children's project. Uh, yes, in the fall, uh, the first one we kick off with is Dining with the Dead, and then we do the Clothes for Kids, which we usually help at least 300 children, 325 children, and they have $100 to spend on clothes, and we take them shopping at Target. And the children are selected by their teachers and counselors as those most in need of new school clothes. And then we do uh, Kiwanis uh, Shoes for Kids, and we give, give at least 250 pairs of athletic shoes and socks to Boys and Girls Club kids. And then we do coats for kids, and that we give somewhere around 400 coats to San Juan County boys and girls. And then the duck race is usually on River, uh, at River Fest, right. and that's Memorial Weekend. But this year, I don't know if they're going to do a modified version, or I think they might be putting it off till the fall. But uh, part of that goes to Kiwanis, and part goes to the River Reach Foundation. And then... I'm not sure if we'll do the pancake breakfast, but these are all fundraisers. And, and then we also partner with the Don't Meth With Us committee right. and uh, foundation, I should say. And uh, most of the people that present are in Kiwanis. And, and that's been a great program, I have to say, too, that you've gone and into the schools, right, with support from the schools to get that message out to kids in the fifth grade? Yes, and Jean Schmidt, our superintendent, oh my gosh, she's such a huge supporter of that. And Jean and Wendy are also. They're going to the be part of this historical walk they as well. Are That's the hunters, right. Hunters, yes. The Hunter Mercantile, yes. Home of the Dusty Attic, which we yes, mentioned. Yes, yeah. See, here we go back to history again. Oh, and the other one I forgot was the African Library Project, where we send a thousand library books to an African. Uh, country right and and we just packaged up 1500 books about a week and a half ago going to malawi wow so yeah we Good do a lot <laughs> do a lot that's true and all and, and the kids and mentioned the shoes the coats the clothes i mean that need hasn't gone away 
during this year. Oh, no. Even it the, was, the fact was, that you've had to change some of your fundraising opportunities, but the need is still there with our correct. kids. Correct. So that's important as well. So this event will help support all those things. Yes. And folks can, uh, again, get tickets uh, before they sell out because there's a limited amount of them, right? Correct. Um, Artifacts and Howard's Cleaners, $15. Yes. Supporting um, the Kiwanis Children's Charities. And uh, it is the first annual, maybe? First anyway. <laughs> it's going to be the first anyway. Farmington <laughs> Historical Walk. <laughs> May the 1st, and uh, that's what's coming up. And people are calling Ron Price right now to no, buy tickets. that's an alarm. That's not, I have my oh, phone off. I forget. It's an alarm to say, get to the radio station an hour ago. <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> Ron Price, we're looking forward to seeing you as the one and only Frank Allen. That yeah. should be exciting. You're going to start growing your mustache? Uh, oh, you know, I should, huh? No, I'll have, I'll have a fake one. I'll have oh. a fake one. But, okay. But it is. It's just I've heard a, some people do that. It's such a wonderful event. I've, I know somebody. He's a great radio personality who does that as well. <laughs> right. But but you know what I'm saying, Scott. It just it just gets into your system. And I, I have one complaint though. I don't know why Tony DiGiacomo always gets to play the bad guy. I think I'd like to play a bad guy. Oh, one of these. Well, times. it's you know what it is. It's, what is it? It's typecasting. Is that what it is? I think it is. Uh -oh. <laughs> I think he's got that reputation. Hopefully, Tony's Tony, working, not sorry. listening now. I don't know. But, you <laughs> know. Scott, could I say real fast yes, too of that that. Uh, uh, Frank's firstborn, Blanche, will be also in this at the Tota. And, Very good. Okay, then, talking about the, the theater. Yes, Tota. Mm -hmm. We'll be right outside the Tota. And so she'll be talking about that. That was another of the Allen endeavors. Um, and then uh, Joey Herring is going to be Harriet Salmon's first president of the uh, first woman president of the First National Bank. First National Bank, that's mm -hmm. true. Very good. And uh, Ron, you were going to. You were gonna say, you're gonna, you're gonna get a mustache. I, I, I'll get a mustache. I'll try, try my best to look like that guy right there on the screen, the one okay. on the right. Yeah, right. He's a nice looking man. You smile nice too much. I, I think you smile more than Frank did. Well, Ron. maybe so. You know, Frank was always about just what's the next buck. But you know, a sad story. I, Jill, I hope I can have this part. He lost it all. He 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 did not die a wealthy man at all. And Jill and I were talking on the way up here, probably because he just. He couldn't stop looking for deals, and not all of them worked out. But, right. But again, for $15, people get to go out, have a wonderful evening, have a wonderful meal, and learn so much about the richness of our past, of this community. And, and again, I don't think you'll ever drive down downtown, drive down downtown, I said that right, <laughs> the right. same way again, because you'll know, oh, that building used to be that, and that building used to be that. So I'm thrilled. I. I think we should be charging one hundred and fifty dollars for this, not just fifteen. <laughs> well, then it's a steal at fifteen dollars. Steal. <laughs> there you go. Exactly right. Perfect. So bring the whole family. Kids will enjoy this. And what what do we say about that, Jill? I'm, I don't think two and three year olds necessarily, but certainly five, six. I think children will enjoy it uh, as long as they are able to hold their attention. Sure. Well, and you mentioned that these are about three to five minute speeches or monologues if you will from these actors and then they're moving to the next thing so exactly. they're, it's not like they're sitting in one spot for a couple hours it's it's moving that's right and as they and walk along the guides are going to give them history of other buildings that they're passing the by yeah yeah so. so i think it'll be very interesting that sounds great well, well i'm looking forward to it i know ron is looking forward to it yeah, absolutely the rest of these cast of crazy characters are looking forward to it <laughs> so it'll be great to get back together and to have a community event it's been a long time so thank you both for coming in this morning to talk about this and thanks for all the work kiwanis does too there's a lot of oh, great things you. that happen so good to see you both thank you very much my guest this morning talking about the first ever farmington historical walk happening 4 p.m. to 8 p.m. on Saturday, May the 1st, presented by Rio del Sol Kiwanis. The new space race is for high-speed internet from low Earth orbit. But do the economics work? From American Public Media, this is Marketplace Tech. I'm Molly Wood.